pages 257 through 260 in your chemistry textbook. So last video in 8A, we were talking about how we could use the periodic table to determine what charge, positive or negative, an atom would take um, if it gained or lost electrons. And you can go one plus, two plus, three plus, and then it switches to four minus, three minus, two minus, one minus. However, like I said, there are some exceptions in groups 3A, 4A, and 5A. So we're gonna talk about those exceptions first. <clears throat> the exceptions to determining the positive or negative charge an atom will take. Um, chemists will use Roman numerals in the name. So if you are reading about one of those atoms that's an exception, you're going to see something like this. For example, tin, then there will be a Roman numeral in parentheses, and it's called tin 2 chloride. So whenever there's an exception and you need to figure out the formula, you will be given a Roman numeral which tells you the charge. So this means that tin is going to have a 2 plus charge. And then chloride, if we look at the periodic table, chloride has a 1 minus charge. So chloride is Cl minus. So in order to become to come up with the formula name, remember we crisscross the numbers, so it would be SnCl2 for that formula. Otherwise, tin can also take on a four plus charge, so it would be tin four plus chloride. So it'd be Sn4 plus, the Cl would be one minus, and so the formula name, once we swap those numbers, would be SNCL4. So anytime that you come across an exception, you will be given a Roman numeral, and then that becomes uh, the positive charge, okay? The positive charge for that ion. And that's how you handle those exceptions. All right, moving right along, the next section is called ionization potential ionization potential and periodic properties. That is the next section in your book. Okay, now I'm gonna give you a statement that you may think, uh, Mrs. Wong, this is quite uh, obvious. Why are you telling us this? But it's worth pointing out. An atom, or rather atoms, are formed as atoms. And as you read in your book, it is important to make this clarification, okay? When atoms are formed in nature, and we don't know how that happens, except that somehow God does it, um, they are formed as atoms. They're not formed as ions. So they always have the same number of protons and electrons. But then what happens to them out in nature is they can become an ion. And when that happens, it's called ionization. Ionization. So they always start as atoms, but then if ionization occurs, they become an ion. So ionization is the process by which an atom becomes an ion. Right? <clears throat> so that's ionization. Next, we need to understand ionization <clears throat> to talk about some periodic properties. A periodic property is a characteristic, a characteristic of atoms that varies or changes that varies regularly across the PT all right which of course stands for our beloved periodic table 
So a periodic property is something about um, atoms that happens and it changes regularly across the periodic table. Um, we'll see what that means in just a second. There are three periodic properties, okay? Three periodic properties. And the first one we'll talk about is called the ionization potential. I think I'm just gonna erase this board so I have a little bit more space here. And we'll talk about the three periodic properties. I don't know why your book is all of a sudden calling it the periodic chart, but I prefer a periodic table, so we're just going to stick with that. But you know, periodic chart, periodic table, same thing. Okay, so our first periodic property is what's called ionization potential. Ionization potential. Okay, and I'll just give you the definition right away. The definition is the amount of energy, <clears throat> the amount of energy <clears throat> needed uh, in order to take an electron, in order to take an electron away from an atom. Okay, the ionization potential is the amount of energy that's needed to take an electron away from, at, from an atom. Remember when an atom loses an electron, then it's gonna have one more proton than it has electrons, giving it an overall positive char uh, charge. So it's also a measure of how easily an atom will become a positively charged ion and how much energy it takes for it to do that. Okay, that's ionization potential. Let's also write down that a low ionization potential means low energy is needed or in other words it's easy okay low ionization potential means that low energy is needed or it's easy for an atom to give up an electron. So the lower the ionization potential, the easier it is for that atom to give away its extra electron and become positively charged. Let's add and become a positive ion. Okay, and let's talk about an example here. For example, let's look at lithium and fluorine. Okay, and we're gonna look at the periodic table and decide which has the easier time for giving away an electron. Which has a lower ionization potential. Okay? Because once you think about it, and once you look at our beloved periodic table, it actually becomes rather obvious, or at least it makes sense to me, which would have the lower ionization potential. So let's take a look at our beloved table. Okay? We've got lithium over here in group 1A, which means how many valence electrons does it have? Giving some wave time. Yes, that's right, it has one valence electron. And then we find fluorine, which is over here in group 7A, 
how many valence electrons does fluorine have? Doo -doo -doo -doo. That's right, seven valence electrons. So which atom do you think would most easily give up an electron? Well, remember, they're both trying to achieve this ideal electron configuration of having eight outer electrons in their outermost orbital, okay? So lithium, if it gave away its one electron, it would have a full orbital underneath that, which actually is only the one s orbital, so it would actually have a full orbital of two electrons, sorry, not eight. Um, but lithium would really kind of want to just get rid of that one extra outer electron then, so it would have a full orbital underneath it. Fluorine, on the other hand, already has seven outer valence electrons. So instead of starting to give away its seven valence electrons, it would rather take or accept an electron from someone else. Okay? I hope this is making sense. So. It would take a lower energy to take away that outer electron on lithium than it would to take away one of fluorine's seven outer electrons, okay? You can also kind of picture the outer electron. There's one lone electron in lithium with nobody to hold on to. It's just floating out there by itself. So it'd be rather easy to scoop away, right? Whereas in fluorine, there are seven of them. Imagine them like all standing and holding hands, all seven of them, like a Red Rover, Red Rover uh, situation, if you ever played that game. Okay, and they don't really want to leave each other. They want to just welcome in another one. So it takes lower energy to give away the one extra electron of lithium than it would to give away one of the seven extra electrons or outer electrons of fluorine. So let's circle lithium. And because it's a periodic property, this means that we can use the periodic table to predict this characteristic. Okay, so if you guys look at figure 8.1, I'm gonna do my best to try to uh, draw that into your notes. Okay, so a rough sketch of the periodic table would look something like this. Um, whoops, I gotta go down a little bit farther. Something like this, and then it goes up a little bit, and then it goes up one more. Okay, so that's our periodic table. Okay, so as we move across the periodic table this way, ionization potential increases. And that's because there are more and more valence electrons as you move right along the periodic table. So as you move right, they don't want to give away their electrons. They want to gain electrons instead. So it takes higher energy for these atoms over here to give one away than it would for one of these atoms over here. Similarly, if you move down on the periodic table, ionization potential decreases. Okay, so why would the ionization potential decrease as you move down on the periodic table? Well, as you move down on the periodic table, remember your atoms are getting bigger because they have more and more electron orbitals. And the farther out electron orbitals are that much farther away from that positive force of the nucleus, from the protons there in the nucleus. So they're not being held as strongly because they're farther away. The electrons in the outer valence orbitals are farther away from the positive protons. And so therefore, it's easier for them to leave. Okay, in a real small atom, an atom up here, for example, in the top part of the periodic table, you have a smaller distance between the outer valence electron and the positive force of the protons in the nucleus. And so they're holding on to each other more tightly. So it's harder, it takes more energy, ionization potential is greater if the atom is smaller at the top of the periodic table. 
I hope this makes sense. Let's do it some.